welcome students today we are going to continue with chapter 2 again as discussed in the previous class we started with concepts so today we are going to take another very important concept to start with that is dual aspect concept dual aspect means every transaction has two effects one debit and one credit. Now, who told this? Luca Pacioli, who started this debit and credit. It involves two account minimum. Whatever transaction we do, there are minimum of two accounts which are involved in that. For example, if we start a business with cash, the two accounts involved are first cash and second capital. Cash is coming in the business and the businessman is contributing it towards the capital that is liability for the business and cash is asset for the business. Next concept is revenue recognition which tells us how to calculate net income for the period. Revenue recognized when it is realized. Now, what do you mean by revenue? Revenue is gross inflow of cash or receivable. That means, not only cash, but receivables also. That is from sale or rendering of services. It also includes royalty, dividends, etcetera. Now, what is realized? Realized means a legal right to receive the amount. That is not only cash, but if we have a legal right to receive the cash, that means it is realized. For example, in case of goods sold on credit or services rendered, amount may be received afterwards, but we have a legal right that we will be able to receive this amount. So, we record it in the accounts that is credit sale is good. We record it. It is not that when we receive the amount, we will record it. Similarly, rent, interest, all these things are recognized on time basis. It is not when we pay or when we receive, we have to record. The time period is over, things are there. You can record in the books of account. But please remember, in case of big contracts, which take very long time, revenue is recognized on time basis or proportion basis. Proportion basis means the amount of contract you have fulfilled, you will record that amount in the books. As in case of higher purchase also, higher purchase means when we take the goods and we do not pay the full amount, we pay it in installment. So, when the amount is received by the business in installment, it is treated as realized, because you do not know in the future whether you will receive the amount in installment or not. So, those installment which are received are realized, those which are not realized that means they are not received. Right. One more important concept, matching concept. Profit or loss earned during a period involve deduction of expenses from the revenue earned during that period. Whatever you earn, you deduct the expenses from that to get the income. So, for this purpose, you have to match the expenses and revenue of that particular period only. That is, if I am talking of this year, I will not take the expenses which were incurred in the previous year or which belong to the next year. Similar is the case for revenue. If revenue is going to be recognized for this period only, we will not take the revenue which we have received in advance in the previous period or which belongs to the next period. This year expenses 
versus this year revenue matched properly to get the real income of current year. Now, revenue is recognized when it is realized and expenses used for generating revenue should also belong to the same accounting period. For example, when sale is complete or services are rendered, revenue is recognized and in case of salary or rent, it is recognized on time basis. Suppose an employee do the work for this month, at the end of the month, his salary is payable, whether you pay it on the next 10th or next 15th, it does not matter, but the salary is due and similar is the case for rent and interest. Rent is due for the month, interest is due for the period. So, we recognize these things not on cash basis, but on time basis as soon as the thing is over, we record it. Okay. The next concept is full disclosure concept. As you know, the financial information is used by various groups like creditors, government, investor, prospective investor. All these people use this information for the purpose of their decision making. As owner and management are also different, in company form of organization, owner is different from the management. So, this makes more relevant that full, fair and relevant disclosure should be made of all the relevant information. So, that all these parties who require the information must get correct information and they can take correct decisions. It means all material facts, notes are disclosed for correct profit and financial position that is assets and liabilities along with the footnotes to make the correct assessment of profitability and financial soundness. So, that everybody who is using this information get correct position and take the correct decision. For this purpose, Company Act 2013 has also prescribed formats for profit and loss account and balance sheet as per Schedule 3. These have to be compulsorily adhered to for the companies. Also, the regulatory bodies like SEBI Securities Exchange Board of India also require that complete disclosure must be made by the companies to give a true and fair view. As you know, SEBI protects the right of investors. They are working for the benefit of investors. So, they require that full disclosure should be made to the investors, so that they know where their money is being put and what use you are doing for their money. The next concept is consistency concept. As the name tells you, we must be consistent in our approach. The accounting information in the financial statement is useful for drawing conclusions only when it allows comparison. Now, comparison can be of two types inter-firm comparison, which means comparison between two firms and second inter-period comparison that is within the same firm for different periods, inter-period do saal ka same company and inter-firm do kampaniya same year ki. To in comparison ko karne ke liye consistency concept is there. Now, comparison is possible only when accounting policies adopted are uniform from year to year. That is, we must have consistency in them. For example, depreciation, inventory, there are various methods. These will be discussed in the coming chapters. 
depreciation means when the asset is used it is called depreciation and inventory means stock. There are various policies according to which you can value them. So, if you are using one method in one year you must not change in the next year. So, that consistency is there. So, consistency eliminates personal bias and it helps in achieving comparable results. Bias means jhukav. Agar aapka jhukav ek particular taraf hai, yani aap personal bias kar rahe hai, to consistency se wo eliminate ho jati hai. Because ek hi jaisa formula hai, to personal bias nahi hoga and it will help in achieving comparable results. Comparison is meaningful if same methods are employed in both the companies. But please note consistency does not means that you cannot change. You can change if it is good, but please tell the financial effects if possible. Suppose I change a policy x to policy y, then I must tell in the accounts that from this change this much effect is there profits have increased or decreased. So, that the person who is using that information is very clear that this particular thing is because of that change, but sometime it is not possible to tell the financial effect or there may be a case that effect is in the next period not in this period then you must disclose this fact that although we have changed we cannot tell the financial effect or its effect will be in the next period. So, that the user get an idea that this is not going to affect in this year it is going to affect in the next year. So, he will be cautious in the next year. The next very very important concept is conservatism concept. Now, this is a concept which says policy of playing safe. Let us be safe. Profit should not be overstated, so that dividends are not paid out of capital, as it will lead to reduction of capital. Now, few words you may not be getting like dividends. What is dividend? The part of profit which is distributed to the shareholder. So, if you are not playing safe the profits will be shown more and you will distribute it which will lead to reduction of your capital which is wrong. So, we do not record profit unless realized, but book our losses immediately. For example, we create provision for bad debt that is those person who will not pay and we write off the goodwill. Goodwill is written off that is shown as an expense, but please note conservatism does not mean you create secret reserves that is show more expenses or less income and create secret reserves. This is prohibited as this is against the law. So, students in today's class we have discussed some very very important concepts. In the next class we are going to tell you about more about the concepts and the system of accounting and all the other remaining topics. Till then goodbye and thank you.